Well, welcome, mathletes, far and wide. My name is Mr. Craig, or Mr. Smith, if you have me in class. And my goal with this channel is to teach all sorts of people all sorts of things about math. I'm going to start with seventh graders, because that's who I've been teaching. And I'm going to start in Texas, because that's where I've been teaching. And the best way to study for a standardized test, a test that's the same for everybody all the time, is to look at what is the skills you're expected to learn. Now, the best, best way is to take a practice test, but it'd take me like an hour to take the practice star test for seventh grade math. And, and we don't have that kind of time. Or if we do, you don't have that kind of attention because me taking a test, not super exciting. But if you can take a practice test, you can figure out what skills you need to work on. And in seventh grade math, it's broken down by TEKS. So I'm going to show you one of the TEKS today and also the coolest way to prep for it. So if you head over to the internet, now I bookmark this site because, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see what I'm doing. That would make more sense. Uh, on this site, you can get here by Googling it. Doot, 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 doot. And you just Google released star test, star with two A's. I've done it a lot, so it's in my history. But also, if you click on it and bookmark it, blue star up there, then you just click on it once. You don't have to type even the beginning of release star test. So you scroll down to whatever test you need to take. Again, this strategy will work for any test. We're doing it with seventh grade math, but you could study for any test this way. I studied for my professional exams this way. You first of all, figure out what you need to work on. And then you go figure out what does that look like? So if I know I need to work on skill 710B, that's one of the TEKS, then I can open up these answer documents. So I'm gonna open this one from 2019 and this one from 2018. And I'm gonna take a look at 2018 first. And this is a PDF. And if I could sort this, if this were an Excel file or any kind of spreadsheet file and I could sort it, that would be amazing. I would just sort by the teak, scroll down the list, find the ones I want. But sadly, this format is not only not sortable, but every time I've tried to copy the data over, it has not worked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control A and just highlight everything. Control C to copy everything. And then I'm gonna pull up just a Google Doc. And again, if I could put this in a spreadsheet that would sort it, that'd be wonderful. Every time I copy it, it doesn't copy as a spreadsheet like it looks on that PDF file, it copies as just a giant long single string of text. And my eyes can't handle giant long single strings of text, but thankfully my computer's eyes can. So control V, I paste that in there. And now instead of having to look through it myself, I come up here to edit and I go down to find and replace. In this case, I'm not worried about replacing but I want my computer to help me find anything that says 10B. It says there's one of them there. I move this box aside and I can see, there it goes, that down here, 10B, whose answer is G, that might be useful later, came from what number? Looks like number 20. There's a two here, but I'm thinking after the answer before, the first number is where I should look. So back on this page, I go to that 2018 test, and now I pull up the actual test, and I find number 20. Scroll down here. Sorry if this makes you dizzy on YouTube, but I want you all to know how to do this, so I want you to actually see me do it once. And there. So this is number 20. Now I can go back and I can do that same thing for the 2019 release. 
So if I do that, I do again, control A, select everything, control C, copy everything. And now, since I don't want any of this old data, I do control A again. So when I paste, it pastes in its place. It gets rid of the old stuff, puts the new stuff in one step. And hey, I've already got this box open and it's already looking for what I want it to look for. And I just come down here and I know this is going to be number nine. So I go back to tests. I open up 2009 and I scroll down to number nine. Now, normally I would do this for the last four years, but I did go ahead and preview. And in the last four years, these are the only two problems for Teak 10B. And so what I want us to do is go ahead and try these two skills and see if we, well, these two problems and see if we can do the skill 10B. And on your own, you'd do the same thing. You'd go look up, okay, this is what I have trouble with. Normally it'd be from taking the practice test and you know, hey, I missed this question and this question. And it says this question was teak whatever, and this question was teak whatever. So you know to go back and look for example problems about those. Now, once you have the example problem, what you can do is screenshot it and put it in a program that you can work with. So let me grab this one first. To do a screenshot, hmm, if I trusted my computer, I'd fold it all the way down so you could see the keyboard but I think it might shut off. So something to try for another day. If you're on a Windows computer, you have a Windows button, four squares that make a bigger square, usually white on black keys, doesn't have to be. But if you hold down window and shift at the same time and then hit the S button, it brings up this screenshot and it freezes my image, which may or may not be embarrassing depending on what I was in the middle of saying. But I just, run my cursor over what I want, and that put it in the clipboard. So I could save it to the clipboard if I want, but I actually want to put it in paint where I can work with it. So I'm going to ignore this, and I'm going to come to paint, and I'm going to say control V, which will paste it there. And that should be big enough to work with, but since I'm trying to show you what I'm doing, I'm going to make it a teeny tiny bit bigger. We'll see if that works. That'll do. So in paint, I can do my math if I want. Personally, if I weren't teaching on a computer, I'd just print it out and show you. But things are what they are. So the first question is, which number line best represents the solution to the inequality 3.3w minus 9 is greater than negative 22.2. And so what I wanna do here is I wanna find the solution, and that just means the values of the variable. The variable is whatever letter is there that might be anything, we don't know it yet. I wanna find whatever values of that variable make this whole entire statement, 3.3w minus nine is greater than negative 22.2. I wanna figure out what make what uh, values make that statement true. And so it's a good thing to know that this sign is greater than and not less than, because if you can say the words greater than, you kind of know what you're comparing. And so I'm gonna show you a trick that I actually taught myself when I was in about six, hold on, I'm sorry, uh, this is, this is an important number. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause my video here for a minute and uh, I need to take this call, sorry. Hello? Is, hi, I'm, I'm showing kind of a weird number for you. Is this like a government number? Oh, no, actually, it's a bat number. Wait, so I'm, I'm like on the phone with Batman right now. Yeah, totally. Isn't that awesome? I, I mean, normally it'd be pretty cool, but I'm trying to teach a math lesson right now, Batman. Oh, yeah, I know. I was actually just watching you. You were watching me teach math. Oh, yeah. I do it all the time. But now I'm not, like, 
in Gotham City, so how are you watching? It's a bad thing. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I was just noticing that you were doing a math problem and making it super lame. You, you thought that I was making it super lame? Well, yeah. I got a better way to do it. You have a, a better way to take the seventh grade math star? Well, of course I do. Because I'm Batman. Okay. Um, what, what way would you do it? Well, it's easy. I would just be awesome. You would just be awesome. Would it surprise you that that's what I'm trying to teach my students to do? Well, yeah, but like, you're using a bunch of words for it. I would just be awesome. Just, just be awesome without doing any work. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, th the problem is, Batman, that, that none of my students are Batman. So they can't just be awesome. They have to actually work for it. Oh, well. That sounds super lame. Man, anyway, I've got some lobster thermidor in the fridge, so if you're not going to listen to my advice, I'm just going to go take care of that. Thanks, Batman. I apologize. Sometimes I get phone calls from people who shouldn't have my number, and it's a little disturbing. But anyway, uh, the less than and greater than signs. When I was in sixth grade, I wanted a way that I could keep track of them. So I thought, hmm, what if I had a log, like well, this log right over here that was diamond shaped. So I imagined that this came out of a tree with the little tree rings and it was a diamond shaped log. How would that be helpful? Well, because the log L-O-G could be short for less than or greater than. So if you put your symbols so they make that diamond shape instead of like say an X-wing shape, then you have a diamond shaped log. L is first, less than, log ends with G. So L for less than, G, a diamond shaped log. Sixth grade me was pretty smart. You should probably meet him. Anyway, I come back to this and I know that if I just solve this inequality and figure out what W is by itself, that I'll be able to match that up with one of these things. So let me switch back over to blue and back to a bigger uh, pencil size. And, my oh goodness, just a second. Oh. Oh, it's me again. Uh, hi, Batman. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering why you're going to make them solve that inequality. When you could just use the number lines to figure out the answer. Well, well, they're not always going to have number lines, so I, I want them to know how to do it either way. Well, well, yeah, but this time they have a number line. They have four number lines, and only one of them works, so why don't you show that? Well, it, because I want them to do it both ways. What, what if it's not a multiple choice text? Well, then you just put it in the back computer, and the back computer tells you the answer. Yeah, see, my kids, they don't even have calculators, and they're definitely not allowed back computers on the test. Huh. Well, they should be. Batman out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my phone so that uh, certain people can't call me anymore. I apologize for the disruptions. Uh, what we're going to do here, you know what, Batman has a point. Let me show you what Batman was talking about real quick, and then we'll go and do it the other way. Okay? So if this statement is true, it's a solution. 
And what I can do is I can look at any of these examples, F, G, H, J, and figure out which of those matches my problem. And so here, I'm gonna say, you know what? If I chose zero, zero would either work when I plug it into this inequality or it wouldn't work. And if I take a look at these four choices on F, it shows that zero would not work. There's nothing above the zero. All the solutions, all the thick arrows are way over here to the left of zero. Whereas G shows that zero would work. It's part of that thick black line. It says, if you plug in zero, it'll be true because everything with that black line over the top is true. Same thing with H. H tells you zero will work and J tells you zero will not work. So I'm gonna plug in zero. And if zero works, then I know it's either G or H because they show zero working and it can't be F or G because they show zero not working. And then if zero doesn't work, then I know that it can't be G and H because G and H have a picture that says zero will work. So if it doesn't, that's not true. And so what I wanna do here is I wanna take this and I wanna just rewrite 3.3 W, that's not a W, minus nine is, what's that symbol? Think about your diamond log. Uh, it's greater than, good. So it's greater than negative 22.2. All right, we can work with that. And I know that I'm choosing to use a specific value for my variable. I'm not gonna put a W here. I'm gonna cover that up and I'm gonna put a zero. Now, 3.3 written next to a W means multiply. So I could put that in parentheses, make sure I multiply. 3.3 times zero is just zero because anything times zero is zero. And when I subtract nine, I'm subtracting nine from zero. So at the end, I'll just have negative nine. So is negative nine greater than negative 22.2? Well, negative numbers can be tricky, but think about it like money. If you have money, that's good. That's a positive thing, a positive number. If you've got a negative situation, a situation that's not so good, you owe somebody money. Negative numbers are like owing money. So is owing $9 greater than owing $22.20? Now, owing $9 is not great. It'd be better to have money. But it's greater than owing more money. So yeah, this statement is totally true. Negative 9 is greater than negative 22 because owing $9 is greater than owing $22.20. So here's what we do we get rid of choice F and choice J. They both lied to us and said zero would not work and it totally does. So we're done with them. We don't need to worry about those as the answer choices. What should I worry about? Well, if I look at something like negative 10, that'd be a waste of my time because G and H both show that negative 10 isn't gonna work. So I wanna choose something that has uh, a difference. Negative five here, cause I like multiples of five. It will work if H is true and it won't work if G is true. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to redo this whole problem using instead of zero, using negative five. And then I can figure out between G and H, which of those is good. So let me replace my W not with zero, but with, don't forget, I need to multiply this. So put it inside parentheses, negative five. If W is negative five, what's gonna happen? Well, down here, 3.3 .3 times five, I could do that. And I just remember since it's negative, I'm gonna have a negative sign at the end. So I do that multiplication 
five times three is 15. Write the five, carry the one. Five times three is 15, plus that one is 16. So I have 16, five. Wait, is that 165? Is that 16.5 or is it 1.65? Well, there's an easy decimal rule that says the number of numbers, aka digits, to the right of the decimal in the problem has to match the number to the right of the decimal in the answer. So I can see that there's a decimal then a three, that's only one in the whole top of the problem. So I need a decimal and just one other numeral. So this should be right, and it makes sense that it is. 3.3, .3, if I round that down, is pretty close to just three. Three times negative five would be negative 15. So my answer should be pretty close to negative 15. Negative 16.5 will work. Negative 1.65, that's nowhere close to 15. And 165, if I had forgotten the decimal, that's nowhere close to three times negative five. So that can't be the answer to 3.3 .3 times negative five. It's got to be close to my estimate. Now, don't forget, I have 3.3 .3 times W minus nine, and I want to know if that's greater than negative 22.2. Right now, I've got a bunch of money that I owe somebody and a bunch of money that I owe somebody else. So all the money I owe is going to be a bigger quantity. I'm gonna add nine to 16.5 and keep it negative. So I would owe on the left side here, $25.50. Is that greater than owing $22.20? No way. It'd be greater to owe less money. So this one here is wrong. Negative five did not work. And so this H answer tells me it would have, and I can get rid of that. The answer to this problem, uh-oh, it's gotta be G, because that's the one that shows zero does work, like we proved it did by using zero, and negative five didn't work, like we proved by using negative five. So that's pretty cool. And since we solved this one using our answer choices, I'm going to go grab that other problem from that other test, and we're going to solve it with no answer choices. So let me get rid of that, pull up my other test. And this time, when I do window shift S, I'm only going to snip the problem. I'm not even going to look at the answer choices so that without my math skills, computer, I can't just cheat and figure it out. So here's a new problem. Looks a little goofy because of the proportions. Let me go back here. You can also do this. If your SNP quality isn't good, you could try zooming in first. Control plus sign. Make the original bigger. And then when you do window shift S, you're snipping a better quality. Now, like I said earlier, I would normally just go ahead and print this out. But if you're stuck working on a computer, that's the way to do it. The question here is, which number line represents the solution to the inequality 125x plus 200 is, think about your diamond log, greater than or equal to 1,200? Hmm. All right. Well, we're going to solve this using opposite operations. Or if we wanna be super trendy or kind of just goofy, we could call it op op for short. Op op, short for opposite operations, means just do everything you did, but in reverse. So if I had an X here at the beginning, what happened to X? Well, first it got multiplied by 125. How do I know that happened first? Because that's the closest thing to it. And then after it ended up with the 125 in front of it, then I added 200. So I know that's the order it happened in. If that's troubling, 
it's hard to look at an X and say what happened first, what happened second. That's all right. Just remember, we're doing opposite operations. So you can think of PEMDAS in reverse. Real quickly, PEMDAS is usually taught as a lie. If you ever see PEMDAS look like this, that is wrong. Parentheses should be on top. You do that before anything else. Exponents should be underneath. You do that before anything else after parentheses. But multiplication and division shouldn't be multiplication first, division afterwards. They should actually be on the same level. Once you finish doing exponents, you do multiplication division at the same time. And since you can't do two things at once, you just do it based on which comes first as you're reading from left to right. But if you have division, in the problem before you have multiplication, do that first. Multiplication and division are on the same exact level. You don't do one and then the other, you do either or, depending on which is left or right. Addition subtraction is the same way. And that is the correct way to write PEMDAS. Parentheses first, exponents next, either multiplication or division as you read from left to right, and then either addition or subtraction as you read from left to right. Opposite operations, we take PEMDAS and we just go bottom to top. Normally you start at the top and go to the bottom. The opposite of that is starting at the bottom, going to the top. So we're gonna deal with addition and subtraction before anything else. Multiplication division next, and then exponents and parentheses will be very last. We only have an addition and multiplication we need to deal with. And so if you have trouble looking at this 125X and remembering that's multiplication, just go ahead and put parentheses around the X right now. I'm going PEMDAS backwards, addition, subtraction. I gotta deal with plus 200 first. It says opposite operations, not opposite numbers. So think of 200 still, but now what's the opposite of adding? subtracting. So keep the same exact number and I'm going to subtract 200 from that side and the other side. If your math teacher hasn't drilled this into you, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Always, always, always. And sometimes it's hard to know what's the one side, what's the other. You can always draw a trail down from the symbol. If it's an equal sign or an inequality like this, that's your middle. No matter how many things are on the left, that's the left. And no matter how few things are on the right, that's the right. You don't have to try to look at everything and find the exact halfway point. The symbol is the middle. So I subtract 200 from both sides. 200 minus 200 is nothing, so that's gone. And then over here, 1,200 minus 200 is just 1,000. So my next line, I haven't changed the 125 times X. I haven't changed that symbol in the middle and I have changed 1,200. So it just looks like 1,000. Opposite operations, finished my bottom level addition subtraction. Multiplication division is next. The opposite of multiplying by 125 is dividing by 125. Now I said dividing, I drew a fraction bar. From now on in your mathematical career, remember that fraction bar is a secret hidden division sign. Even inside a fraction, if I have one half, that means I have one thing divided by two groups. So a fraction bar is a division sign. And I come over here and I know I'm gonna take 1000 divided by 125. I could write out long division, 1,000 divided by, I say by when I'm leaving a building, so that must be in the building, and that's outside the building, but I can also be sneaky. 125 times two is 150. 150 times two, no, excuse me, 250. Mm -hmm. 250 times 2 is 500, and 500 times 2 is 1,000. So I can already reason how many groups 
I'll get when I split 1,000 into 125, I'd get two groups here from the two groups here, from the two groups here, which would be two times two times two, that number's gotta be eight. Do a little math shortcut. And all I had left because 125 divided by 125 is just one, is one X. Now you notice I don't write the one in front because if I write an X, you can see there's just one. I don't have to tell you. If there were more than one, I would have to tell you. But when I write an X, I wrote an X, a single X, a one X. And so we save some time by not having to write that one. Symbol once again hasn't changed. And we see that X is greater than or equal to eight. Now we're ready to go look at our number lines. So let me clear off some space here and go grab our choices. Uh -oh. Make these a little smaller, control minus sign. And I am going to grab with a screenshot, window shift S, drag across all that imagery I want, and I want a statement that matches, get out of here, X is greater than or equal to eight. So I can look just at the very end and say, this doesn't make any sense right down here on, what choice is that? Choice B, 10 is greater than eight, and you don't have that in the arrow, so you're wrong. Same thing with you, D. It should be X is greater than eight, which would include 10, so you're wrong. And so I've got it down already to C. Oh yeah, the arrow's going to right, bigger numbers. And A, arrow's going to the right, bigger numbers, eight, nine, 10, those would all count. What's the difference? Well, the difference is this one has a filled in dot and this one has an open donut -y type dot. I know the inclination is to go with the donut because donuts are delicious, but we got to make sure that it's the right one based on this symbol. So a few ways to remember that. The symbol means greater than or equal to. So if X is equal to eight, this symbol says that's okay. And that means there should be a solid dot because the open dot says, this one's not okay, start at the next place. Well, sad day for donuts, good day for math. We know that's gotta be A. The other thing you can do, and I'll go ahead and close my screen share so you can see this in actual life size. If you're watching on a really big screen, otherwise I might be phone sized. <laughs> you can look at the symbol and try to make a dot out of it. So if I have a greater than sign and I use my fingers to then make a dot, it's kind of more of an oval than a circle, but it's a dot that's not filled in. If I have an underline on my symbol, then I can make the dot and also fill it in. I can't look through it anymore. So a plain symbol can only make a round donut dot, whereas an underline symbol can make a filled in dot, okay? And other than that, I turn my phone off. How is this happening? Um, hold on just a second. <laughs> this is weird. Hi, Batman. I I definitely turned off my phone. How are you calling me? Well, you know, I don't want to have to state the obvious to you, but I'm Batman. Oh, okay, uh, I'm going to hang up on you now. Actually, you won't, because I hacked your phone. What? No, you, you can't do that, Batman. I'm hanging up on you. No, Batman, what? <laughs> Here's the thing, kids. Sometimes you don't have fingers. Like me. So if that lame trick doesn't work for you, Remember, just be awesome. Batman out.